I'm here in Springfield, New Jersey at a Tesla supercharger station. This is a V3 supercharger station, which can deliver up to 250 kilowatts, the maximum that my 2021 Model 3 can accept. We're gonna do a V3 supercharger test. I'm recording the whole session. We're gonna take a look at the charging curve, the peak charging rate, how long it held it. We're also gonna take a look at a couple metrics that I always love to really test out is, how long did it take to recover 100 miles and 200 miles of range? I think that's important for road trips. So we're gonna go over the whole recording after this, and I'm gonna talk about what's going on. Uh, before we do that, I wanna mention a couple things about supercharging. If you do wanna get the maximum charge rate when you arrive at a supercharger station, make sure you use the destination, the supercharger destination in your navigation system. Enter it because then the car knows it's going to a supercharger station and it'll precondition the batteries. It'll warm them up so they can accept the maximum charge rate or at least close to it. See, the, the rate of your charging is going to be dependent on how warm or cold the battery is. If it's too cold, you won't get near to the full charging rate it can until the battery warms up for a little bit. So that's just a little tip. And also always use the in-car navigation because it also tells you the supercharger station that you're arriving at, how many stalls are available, and also if it's a 150 kilowatt supercharger station or a 250 kilowatt supercharger station. You wanna kinda of know that information before you arrive, especially the part where are any of the stalls available. Um, so next up, we're gonna take a look at the whole charging curve, analyze it, talk about it, maybe compare it to the V3 supercharging test I did on my 2019 Model 3 last year. We'll see if, it does, if we did better this time, worse, uh, or if it's about the same. Hopefully it's relatively consistent. We charged to 80% in 28 minutes on that vehicle last year. So that's kind of what I'm hoping to do on this car here today. Before we jump over and watch the whole recording, please don't forget, click that subscribe button and tap the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge. The charge rate started off at 90 kilowatts and didn't reach the full 250 kilowatt power until the four minute mark when the battery was at 9%. It only held 250 kilowatts for about a minute and a half until the state of charge hit 17% and then began a steady ramp down until the car was at 30% state of charge and the charge rate leveled off at 139 kilowatts. I'm gonna stop the recording here at 32% state of charge. That's because this is the point when we've just added 100 miles of range back into the car. Let me explain. Take a look at the trip meter underneath the timer. I just completed a 70 mile an hour highway range test where I drove from 100% battery down to zero. I drove 310.3 miles and I used 73 kilowatt hours and averaged 234 watt hours per mile. So if you look at the 310 miles and you divide 100, which is what I wanna get back from 310, uh, you'll get 32%, which is where we're at now. Uh, if you need further proof of the fact that this is uh, enough energy to drive 100 miles, look at the watt hours per mile I averaged 234 watt hours per mile during this 310 mile drive. If you multiply 234 by 100, 100 miles, you're gonna get 23,400 watt hours, which is necessary to propel the car for 100 miles. That's equal to 23.4 kilowatt hours. If you take a look under the battery graphic to the right, you'll see that we just added 24 kilowatt hours, slightly more than what we would need to propel the car for 100 miles. If you wanted to use the EPA range rating of 353 miles as your basis to calculate the 100 miles added back, we would have done that a minute sooner when the state of charge hit 28%. However, I don't think that's realistic to use because we just did this highway range test and 310 miles in very good, close to ideal conditions 
is what most people are going to experience. So, uh, you know, the EPA range is one thing. We like to use the real world driving range of what we experienced when I talk about how long it takes to recharge to get a certain amount of miles back in the battery if you're on a long road trip. You also have to consider that uh, what I'm experiencing here is kind of the optimal charging conditions. The battery was warm. We were at 0% state of charge. If you plug in at a higher state of charge, 40 or 50%, let's say, if you're on a road trip, you're not going to get that super high charge rate that I experienced. So it's going to take a little longer. Um, but if you do plug in when you're down to zero and the battery's nice and warm and you're at a 250 kilowatt DC fast charger, you should be able to add 100 miles of highway drive driving range in about 10 minutes and that's pretty good. The car maintains the 139 to 140 kilowatt charge rate until the 40% state of charge point which was achieved in only 13 minutes. Uh, the vehicle then reaches 50% state of charge in 16 minutes and is pulling 114 kilowatt at that point. It took just under 21 minutes to reach 60% state of charge and then the battery reached 65% in 23 minutes. Now I mentioned 65% because that happens to be the point when the car has now added back 200 miles of driving range based on my 70 mile an hour highway range test. 70% state of charge is then reached in 26 minutes and the charge rate is down to only 80 kilowatts. Uh, we then hit the 80% state of charge point in 32 minutes. That was slightly longer than the 28 minutes it took my 2019 Model 3 to reach the 80% charge point at. But we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Like most EVs, the charge rate drops off considerably once the vehicle is more than 80% charged. In 42 minutes, the car then reaches 90% state of charge and the charge rate's down to only 37 kilowatts. The only question now was, will we get to 100% charged in under an hour? That didn't happen, but we did reach 99% state of charge in under an hour, which is pretty much 100% charged in my book. Uh, however, it did take another four minutes for the car to actually hit 100% charged, and we finished up the 0 to 100% charge test um, by adding 75 kilowatt hour in one hour and three minutes. Okay, so we didn't quite go zero to 100% in an hour. But you know, an hour and three minutes is still pretty good. And after 80%, we don't really concentrate too much on how long it takes to get that last 20% because most people, when they're supercharging or DC fast charging, unplug at that point because all electric vehicles really slow down uh, pretty much after 80%. Some slow down dramatically, like the Mustang Mach E, uh, and others, you know, will hold a decent charge rate, but typically you don't want to stay plugged in at a supercharger or a DC fast charger past 80%, unless, you know, you just have a ton of time to kill or you really need that extra range to make it to your next destination or your next uh, charging event. Um, any event, so let's take a look at how the 2021 Model 3 compared to my 2019 Model 3 when I did the supercharging uh, recording of that last year. Now, a couple things I need to mention. Uh, that was uh, a year old and it had, I think, about 15,000 miles on it at the time. So the battery already had some battery degradation, more so than my 2021, which only has about 5,500 miles on it. So it's really a new car. Um, but uh, we did notice that the charging curves are different. And I kind of expected this because I heard Tesla did a little bit of massaging that DC fast charge curve, uh, but now we're able to put them up on a graph and compare them side by side and notice the differences. And there are differences. So let's take a look at that now. If you see on the chart, the red line is the 2021 that we just tested and the black line is my 2019. Uh, on the 2019, I plugged in at 2% and only charged to 80%. So you'll see the black line ends at 80%. And on the 2021, I went from zero all the way up to 100%. But immediately in the beginning, I noticed the difference because when I, when I did the test on my 2019, 
uh, at 5% and only a couple minutes in, um, we were already at the maximum charge rate of 250 kilowatts and it held it to the 23% state of charge point. It held it for 18% of the state of charge. You know, a not, pretty nice clip there. Now take a look at my 2021. It didn't reach the 250 kilowatt mark until it was 9% state of charge. And it only held it to 17%. So it only held the maximum charge rate for 8%. Now, that's one of the things we talk about a lot here when I do these DC fast charge tests is a lot of people get really hung up with the maximum charge rate, but what's really important is how long does it hold that maximum charge rate? Sure, the Model 3 can accept 250 kilowatts, but if it only accepts it for 8% of the state of charge and only a couple minutes, it really isn't a 250 kilowatt DC fast charging car. You have to take a look at the average that the car holds. So now let's take a look after 17%. It has a pretty aggressive ramp down. Uh, and at, by the time we're at 30% state of charge, it's down under 150 kilowatts. It's somewhere around 138, 139. Uh, now, when you look at the 2019, after 23 kilowatts, it does ramp down a little bit less aggressively than the 2021 does. Uh, and then by the time we're at 35% state of charge, it's actually slowing slight, charging slightly slower um, or at a lower charge rate than my 2021 was. Uh, and after uh, a couple of minutes though, then it, 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 it kind of matches it. And from that point, from the 40% state of charge point on, it's very similar. The 2019 actually in a couple points charged a little bit quicker, um, but for the most part, that's you know really extraordinarily similar. And but by the time it hits 65% state of charge, the cars are charging exactly the same, at least up to the 80% charge point when I unplugged the 2019. I, I pretty much assumed that from there on in, it was probably gonna be the exact same because I I did supercharge tests with that, even though I didn't record it like this. And it looks like the charging curve was really about the same amount. So the point here we're trying to make is, you know, the, the Model 3 is a fantastic supercharging car. You know, zero to 80% charged in 32 minutes. Uh, I reached that in 28 minutes with my 2019. But I did plug in at 2%, so that's a little bit there. Uh, and also the 2019 uh, had lost some capacity. So when I charged it from 2% to 80%, we added 58 kilowatt hour. Uh, when I did the 2021 now from zero to 80%, I added 60 kilowatt hour. So it was two more kilowatt hours. So you'd expect it to take a little bit longer, 28 minutes versus 32 minutes. You know what? It's about a half an hour. Uh, I'm not going to really go crazy over a minute or two. Um, but charging from zero to 80% in about a half an hour on a car that I just was able to drive 310 miles, uh, you know, that that's a great road tripping car. Uh, you know, I, but I, one of the things I want to point out is we talk about the charging curve. Uh, it would be great if the Model 3 could hold that 250 kilowatt a little bit longer, uh, but it doesn't. Uh, take a look at the Audi e-tron's charging curve. Now, the Audi e-tron has 150 kilowatt um, maximum DC fast charge rate, but look at how it holds that 150 kilowatt. It's a straight line until uh, over 70% state of charge. So, you know, while the e-tron e doesn't have 250 kilowatt DC fast charging, you know, 150 doesn't sound as sexy. People are talking, oh, the, you know, there's new EVs coming out that can charge 300 kilowatts. You have to really look at their charging curves. You can't just talk about their maximum charging rate. How long do they hold that? And the e-tron is fantastic. This is what you want a charging curve to look like. Um, you know, it's not a very efficient vehicle. So even though it's at 80% state of charge, it doesn't go as far as the Tesla does, even with a bigger battery, because it's not as efficient an electric vehicle. And to be honest with you, with customers, how far you could go and how long it takes to charge is all they really care about. They don't even care how many kilowatt hours they're stuffing back into the battery pack. It really comes down to okay, how long do I have to charge and how far will that get me? Uh, and the Model 3 still is a fantastic car for delivering short bursts of power, especially at the lower state of charge point. If you plug in your Model 3 now after 25, 30%, you're not gonna sniff 200 kilowatts. It's gonna be lower. You can see that on the, on the charge uh, 
uh, graph there. Um, but it still charges really quickly. And if you do plug in at a low state of charge, the Model 3 and the Model Y are fantastic for replenishing a lot of range quickly. And it's just part of the reason why people love Teslas. Uh, you know, with the supercharger network combined with the fast uh, supercharging speeds, it makes the car very easy to live with. It's, it's really like no compromise. And it's, you know, it's why Tesla owns such a large percentage of the electric vehicle market today. All right. So that's it for our 2021 Tesla Model 3 V3 Supercharge Test. Thanks for watching and don't forget, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge.